I have been wanting to get the GoXLR as my main interface for streaming for the longest time now, but it's been out of stock virtually everywhere for so long. You will pretty much only find this thing being sold on eBay for much, much more than what it retailed for at launch and even what it retailed for afterwards, which was around $500. However, I still went ahead and bought one on eBay for around $450 and I would say that I definitely got extremely lucky to find that price. And you can still get lucky too, just as I did here. But today, I would like to discuss if it's so great that I would be happy paying those higher prices if I hadn't found this deal already. So let's go ahead and dive right in. For more great content just like this, I just make sure to subscribe and then turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any uploads. Also leave a like and a comment down below with all of your thoughts on this video. And while you're at it, I always leave affiliate links down below in the description as well. But make sure that you check out Lusterville so you can find the best deals on all of that tech that you're shopping for. It's a simple browser extension that helps you make the best purchasing decision. And lastly, don't forget to check out my merch store if you're into some monochrome clothing like everything I'm wearing right here. So with that said, links to everything down below. The exterior design consists of plastic, which sort of came to a surprise to me. It doesn't feel cheap by any means, and it does have quite a bit of heft to it, for sure. Uh, but there's some things that are kind of annoying about its exterior that do make it feel a little bit cheap. For one, all of the ports are on the back, making certain ones harder to reach. And this isn't exactly a value factor, it's just kind of annoying. And two, uh, the top surface is a glossy surface, which while it looks nice, it is still a very fingerprinty surface to say the least. And like I said, this whole thing is made out of plastic, even the glossy surface. So even though you're not touching it directly, you can still get some fingerprints on it. However, you're pretty lucky because most of the interaction happens with the buttons themselves, none of which are going to be glossy. But I still haven't even mentioned how beautiful this thing looks after you've set everything up. And I will touch onto its customization very, very soon. On the top, you've actually got four faders to control pretty much whatever you want along with LED lights right beside them to behave in two different ways with meat switches for each individual fader. These are also motorized faders, which are just amazing to use. These are very satisfying. You will also find LED screens over these faders to display their function as you desire to have them. Now on the other side, you're going to find the sample pad and effects panel. You're going to find four knobs for adjusting the reverb, another for the echo, another for the pitch, and another for your voice and the gender, I should say. Now, there's also a button for a megaphone effect, a robot effect, our tone effect, and the effects buttons to enable these by will. And these numbers on the side are going to indicate the different presets for effects so that you can instantly switch between different voices without having to make the adjustments live. You can just leave them set and ready to go whenever. On the bottom, you've actually got the sample pad and you've got three banks. So 12 samples for you to record if you want them in total. And you will also find a bleep button and a mic mute button in case you do need to cough or something like that. And now on the back, you've actually got a bunch of ports, but it's still lacking in one department in particular. And I'm gonna get into that in just a second. There's going to be a power barrel connector, an optical port, USB port for data, line out, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack, line in, and the single XLR port. My biggest issue with it is going to be just that, that this is a relatively large unit. It is an XLR interface. I think that at the very least, it should be able to have two XLR ports. So that's just pretty strange. However, as you saw, there is still a lot to this device. And now pretty much everything is going to be handled by the software, which is going to be required download if you want to use the Go XLR at all. This is where you would make all of your customizations. And while it is intimidating to look at at first, but you will get used to it after spending just a little bit of time with it. It is especially fun to use uh, just to change the colors of the LEDs on this to your liking. But most importantly, you can make the faders do whatever you want, not just the volume in real time. And for the samples, you can record these if you want, or you can add your own audio samples if you've already got some elsewhere. You just press the button to have it play, and everything else is pretty straightforward, really. 
the most difficult part might just be the initial setup if we go into into adjusting the eq for your microphone to sound the best it can and i will get into that soon but you do have adjustments like noise gate compression eq and, and the de-esser which are especially useful and now these took a while for me to get just right but i'm very satisfied with the current results as you're actually listening to what that sounds like through my audio technica bp40 so feel free to play around with it and do not forget to save your settings because they do not save automatically there's going to be a floppy disk button right around this side so make sure that you click on that after you make any little adjustment because you could just end up forgetting and losing everything after all and that would just really suck happened to me a couple of times so this is essentially how i have it set up i have my faders for my microphone volume the music volume headphones volume and overall system volume with these actually being color coded adequately to match the different shades of different colors to add more eloquence to this section i would like to say i can individually control each one as i please and i pretty much only use the live effects so the first preset for changing my voice and all and i occasionally touch on the on the effects depending on the situation but it can be very fun for voicing like different types of characters especially if you're just some one man show like me and for the sample pad i essentially only filled up four of the banks since i don't really have enough use for 12 banks i just ended up using four and even that was just a bit of a stretch i just ended up i just have a couple of banks for like when i get a new follower when i get a new subscriber if i'm going on break or if i'm leaving for the night it's really just going to be a pre-recorded sound sample and that i recorded into it and that's essentially it that's the most use that i've personally gotten out of it even though i haven't had this thing for that long really and i do use the bleep button often for sure and the mute button very occasionally too however that's essentially my use case and when it comes to the audio portion this offers pretty much everything i would ever need minus a few inconveniences i can actually use any microphone with it and it's got plenty of gain for even the sure sm 7b but these things have to be adjusted in the software of course. I use a noise gate that rejects all sounds under negative 45 decibels and doesn't really activate my microphone until it goes above that threshold. Since I do speak very quietly by default, however, I couldn't get it to completely cut off certain sounds while I was speaking, like if I have my AC on for instance, now, you won't hear it at all if I'm not talking, but if I do start talking, the noise gate will let the sound of my AC through as well and that was I guess kind of a hard way of learning how noise gate works in the first place i thought that it would just cut off that background sound and just let me speak directly into this into this microphone mind you this is a dynamic microphone a ton of condenser microphone so either way it should be doing its best to reject other sounds that are not going directly into it but you can still hear it though this probably also just means that i need to do more work in the settings but this works fine for now because it's only distracting in the monitoring process really which, by the way, the sound that you get back when you're monitoring is just a little bit different than what your actual output is going to be like, which might confuse you at first, but I got used to it and I essentially know what to expect from the output from here on out. You can get very specific with the EQ, by the way, as you can really play around with it and get the best sounds for you. And I think I've already found it as you're listening to it right now. All of these things are very helpful to have, no doubt. So during a live stream, how useful can that actually be? Well, very, but it's not a necessity for streamers at all. I personally like being able to deliver on the best viewer experience possible, so I really searched everywhere that I could for this thing until I finally got it. And it does make some things easier. The audio for one is going to be one thing. It just made getting very detailed with the audio very easy. And it gave me a sound that I was hard pressed to get on any other mixer I've tried with my Audio Technica BP40 that I have right here. I really love the voice changer and the effects available here because you've actually got the most control over these out of any other interface I've tested through the software itself already. So that's really awesome. I mean that you you can decide on how you want uh, these knobs to affect the sound from just one knob twist or one button and if you set a preset for everything like everything is just at the tip of your hands it's been incredibly nice to have but it is just a luxury item really and this is actually when i get into my complaints I do not like only having a single XLR port on this device. This is inconvenient because I like being able to test out different mics on stream and having to change my EQ settings every single time since I only have that one port is kind of annoying so I just don't really really do it but I wish it wasn't a problem at this stage. And there's only a 3.5 millimeter jack which is not the standard for interfaces like these where we would probably want or are used to getting a quarter inch entry instead and also this port is on the back making it a lot harder to reach 
with a lot of heaven, depending on how you have it set up. I just wish that there was an easier way of this thing which is going to sleep without having to unplug it or disconnect it from your pc and whenever you turn it off for the night as it doesn't have an off switch or anything like that there is no off switch like at all so this thing will always stay on no matter what i do wish that it had more faders or at the very least a cheaper extension that doesn't necessarily require having me get like a go xlr mini and daisy chaining it if i want more faders and that kind of thing i wish that there was just a cheaper solution to that and one that was in stock in the first place so there's that i hope that this review wasn't too long but i'm ready to deliver on a conclusion the go xlr is an incredible interface that offers a lot of professional features in the software and a lot of fine tuning that I really do appreciate. And the built-in effects and the sound effects in general that you can add of your own and different buttons is also so great. Like it's just a really cool thing to have around and it's super useful for streamers in particular, which is exactly what this is catered for. I just love so many things about it and I do wish it could have some things be improved in the future for sure, like maybe maybe with the Go XLR too. But if I hadn't found that deal, I wouldn't have caved and gotten this because I was getting by just fine with my boring Yamaha MG10XU mixer with physical everything that, that could work just fine for streaming and thanks to its built-in effects and great monitoring capabilities as well. And this is less than half of what the Go XLR costs at MSRP and it's in stock everywhere for instance so I can still recommend that mixer too. Right now these are being priced gouged extremely high and it's not worth the investment until they come back in stock to your typical retailers. So I am just going to leave some recommendations for much more for our options linked below. But the Go XLR is a very unique product that I really love having and that I won't be trading in for many years to come unless the Go XLR 2 comes out. But even then, that is highly debatable. So right now, don't get it unless you find a really good deal on it. But when it's back in stock, this is going to be an easy recommendation to make for sure. And don't forget that I do stream every Friday and Saturday on Twitch from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern time. So do make sure to stop by. Do realize that it is pretty late, but it is one of the most chill live streams that you can ever come across. So I do encourage you to stop by. Links for that are going to be down in the description, as well as links to my Instagram and my Twitter to stay up to date with the latest and greatest regarding the Tech Summit endeavors. But with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Hopefully this review was useful to you. If you have any questions, let me know. And if you want me to make a video showing you guys how to set things up, then I would love to do that too but just let me know where the demand really is. But with that said, have a good one and enjoy.